Hello everybody, you've been asking a lot, Florian, please make more videos, make more videos. So here I am back to have some saxophone fun with you guys. And um, I was kind of uh, feeling inspired to make a little summer saxophone challenge because uh, actually I was traveling a lot over the last two months and I wasn't able to play any saxophone really for the last seven or eight weeks almost, like literally haven't touched my own saxophone. So uh, I was home today feeling like, ha, I need to kind of get back into things, you know, get my practice back on. And I was thinking what could be like a nice way to do it. And that kind of gave me an idea for a nice video. You see, when I first started playing in public, and I guess when all of us start playing in public at sessions or open mic events for the first time, one of the kind of real challenges is what songs do you play? Because uh, when I started, and probably it's the same with you, when you're just a beginner, and I was playing only like a month or so when I first uh, joined my first session here in Amsterdam, the real question becomes, what song or songs do you play? Because obviously you can't really play everything yet. Most of the songs are just, you know, too hard, too difficult. You know, you can't play uh, Caravan at, uh, you know, triple tempo yet. So you have to kind of uh, you know, pick songs that kind of match your level, but that are still cool. And so when I started playing in public for the first time, I really remember having this kind of hunt, like listening to a lot of jazz music and just kind of looking for songs that felt to me like, hey, that's something that I could play that will still sound cool, but it's kind of doable for me to learn and actually play in public. So in this video, I'm gonna give you my list of the five songs that I kind of used to kind of get into the gig scene here in Amsterdam that were kind of easy enough, but at the same time kind of cool to play and, and you know give some real opportunity for growth at the same time, so there's some progression in them. And uh, I want to kind of turn it into a nice summer saxophone challenge where all of us can kind of use these five songs to get, hopefully, you into playing in public also. So I'm gonna give you the five songs. I'm gonna just give, you, give them to you right here in the video. But then over the next five weeks, I'm going to kind of make one video a week and actually kind of addressing the, uh, you know, the different songs and why they're so cool, why they're especially suited to help you get into playing in public. And in this video, I'm going to address actually the first uh, one already. So we'll, we'll do actually one in this video to start with, with the first song. And so let's start with actually, what are these five songs? Number one song, the song that my first song that I ever played in public when I went to a session is Footprints by Wayne Shorter. Second one is the Mo Better Blues, famous from the movie, The Mo Better Blues. Impressions by John Coltrane. Number four is Equinox, also by John Coltrane. And last but certainly not least, Doxy by Sonny Rollins. So these are the five songs um, in, in order. So they actually work kind of for me at least in that order. I guess you could reverse it, but that's the order that I will uh, you know, take them up in. And so in this video, I'm going to start with Footprints by Wayne Shorter. Now there are actually many reasons why uh, Footprints by Wayne Shorter is such an amazingly great song to, uh, to help you get started with playing in public for several reasons. The first one is that it's actually a really cool song. It's a very famous song. It was a big hit once upon a time. And everybody in the jazz community kind of knows it, but it's not so often played at sessions. So when you suggest this particular song to the band, 
Nine out of 10 times, they will know it. The harmony is not very difficult, so they'll be able to play it for you. And right away, you've you know, gotten a little bit, some kudos from the band for suggesting this particular song, because the audience is gonna love it, the band itself is gonna love playing it. It's a really cool, nice song. So even if your uh, improvisation or your playing after is not you know, quite up to snuff yet, at least you've got some, let's say, uh, you know, saxophone uh, culture kudos, you know, B flat uh, culture, uh, kudos for uh, you know picking this particular song. So that's kind of reason number one why this is a great one. The intro especially is really strong, it's really famous, so as soon as the audience hears this boom, 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 everybody will be like, ah, Footprints, cool, a song we don't hear so often, but a really nice one, so that's a great, uh, you know, first uh, impression also for yourself. You know, this is your first time playing in public, hopefully, so you know, you want to make a good impression. Uh, the second part is that the melody to this song is, is cool, uh, but it's also rather simple, meaning it's relatively easy to play and also uh, easy to remember. Because uh, you know, when you're playing in public at a session, generally it's best to do it without any sheet music, to just you know, play the song from your head, from memory, completely. And so for a first song, you want to pick something that's kind of easy to memorize and the melody is not very uh, complex, let's say. Uh, you know, some people will give me flack for that, like, how oh, can you say that Fruit Princess? Yes, it's a very beautiful uh, thing that sort of seems simple and, you know, we can get into all that, but to play it, it's not that hard. It's a pretty easy song, pretty easy melody to remember. It kind of has this good, strong hook. So this is something that you can get into your memory quite easy, that you can play from heart, you know, without sheet music, fairly easy. And that's also a very uh, you know, important uh, thing to take into account for a song like this. So that's the second reason. Third reason is that the harmony to uh, Footprints is also pretty straightforward. So this song is basically played in D minor and G minor, I think, but uh, those keys are so close to each other that I think that you can pretty much use the key of D minor to play almost the entire song. So almost the entire song is played in one key. And there's this one place where this where you very quickly go to several other chords, but it's so short and it's so focused that it's kind of like a nice challenge that because the rest of the song is relatively easy, you can kind of solo in one key and you only have this one pace, uh, one place where the song takes kind of like a weird bend for only like two bars. It's kind of nice to actually have that contrast. Simple piece, slightly harder piece. It's not very difficult, but um, you know, for me as a beginner, it was, it was very doable. And you don't have to do a lot of difficult things in those few bars where the chords are different. So harmony-wise, the song is also actually very suited for a beginner to play over. So that's the third reason why it's a great choice. Fourth reason, the song is kind of intuitive. So we all know that you know, some jazz songs out there are intentionally difficult and have sometimes you know, very slight key changes where you almost didn't hear that the key changed and suddenly you're like, oh my God, all my keys don't work anymore. So uh, you know, Footprints is one of those songs that doesn't do it. It's a very you know, pretty straightforward song that sounds intuitive. This song kind of does what you expect it to do. It doesn't have any crazy unexpected things in there. And that also makes it a little bit more easier, more intuitive uh, to work with. So, you know, like less technically precise reason, let's say, but I think important, like a good intuitive song, easy to understand, easy to feel, let's say, without intellectualizing it too much. Just an easy song to remember, easy to feel. And then reason five, last reason for uh, picking this particular one, is that the rhythm to Footprints is kind of uh, unique. It's, it's pretty simple. It has this kind of strong uh, kind of beat to it, kind of feel to it. It's not a standard uh, you know, swing rhythm, for example. So it kind of lends itself very well for a beginner soloing. There, there's like a lot going on rhythmically. It's a strong also rhythmic hook, I think, because you have that melody, sort of melodic uh, structure, 
Padum pum pum pam. Padum pum pum pam. And so this this kind of up and down beat creates this easy space to kind of sort of flow around a little bit with your solo. And you don't really have to do so much. Like you only have to like play a few notes. And because the hook itself, because the rhythm itself is so catchy and interesting, it'll quite quickly sound kind of cool. So it's one of those songs where you don't really have to work too hard uh, in order to make it sound kind of awesome. And of course, as a beginner getting started, you know, playing in public, that's kind of uh, what you want. So that's the fifth reason uh, to start with Footprints. So I hope that you will join me in this kind of five week challenge to you know, start playing these five songs and hopefully help you, you know, get yourself up to the point where you're feeling like, you know what, I'm actually gonna do this. I'm gonna play this in public. And if you're already playing in public, then it's just five really, really great songs to you know, add to your repertoire. Because these are really cool songs. People really love these songs. They really work super well at uh, sessions. So if you want to follow along with this fun summer saxophone challenge, uh, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, of course, hit the notification bell so that you're sure that you'll get the notification when I post the next video in this series. And also make sure that you're subscribed to my free newsletter. You can do that on hellasaxophone.com, it's totally free, and I'll be putting some uh, you know, updates about this challenge in there in the newsletter. Also, then how to start with learning this first song with learning footprints. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the exact steps of like how to learn a song the way that a pro, somebody who really plays in public regularly would learn a song from learning the melody, learning the harmony, understanding how those two work together, and then using that information to build solos and an actual like performance. I have a whole program that's like very, very, I think the most in-depth program on that. It's called the Full Song Workshop Program. You can also get that on my website or if you're already uh, a member, you can just go into your vault and you know open that and check that out for like all the exercises that you can do to really learn a song up to the highest possible level. Now, some of those videos are like, 20 videos or something. Some of them are like an hour long, so I'm not going to repeat all of that, you know, in this little video here, but I'll give you guys all the gist. So even if you're not a member or you're not, you know, you don't have that program of mine that you can kind of follow along. And so step one is to learn the song and is to listen to it. So what you need to do is, uh, you know, find the original version by Wayne Shorter. I put a link in the description to that also below. It's on YouTube, so it's easy to find and listen to that but also find like five to 10 other versions, maybe by other players that you like, maybe even on other instruments and listen to those also. And just keep listening to it for a few days until you get to the point where you just know this song, just like you know any other song that's like in the top 20 right now on the radio, you know, like a new Lady Gaga song, so that you get to that point where you can just kind of hum it along and it's just, you know, a song that you know. Once you get there, then it's time to start subscribing the song or transcribing the song, sorry. So you, of course you need to subscribe, but you need to transcribe uh, this song. And how you do that is you just listen to the original version, so the Wayne Shorter version that I put in the link below here, because that's in the original key. So that's the key that will be actually playing the song in if we go and play in public. So that's important. Um, and just note by note, listen to it, find the notes of the melody, uh, on the saxophone and transcribe it. Now, if you can read and write notes, like in the official staff, like music notation, that's great, just use your skill there. If you don't, don't let that stop you. So what you can also do, I'm assuming that you at least know, you know the note names on the saxophone, that's kind of a no brainer, you know, you have to know at least the names to the notes that you're playing. And you can just transcribe by writing down the notes. So like A, A, B, C, and just, you know, write it down uh, in letters, and that way you can still transcribe the melody. Don't bother with the solos for now, just the melody part. And then once you've transcribed, so once you've figured out what is played, and you've transcribed the whole thing yourself, and if this is your first time, it may take a while. It took me like a week or something to really transcribe like the whole thing and figure it out and make sure that I got it all right. But once you have that, then step three, start practicing the melody. And do it in such a way, like start slowly, learn it, you know, look at your transcription if you need to, to you know, play the notes. And once you can play the whole thing, start playing it without looking at the notes and get yourself up to the point where you can play it without having to look at the notes. And the best way to do that 
is to chop it up into small bits. So, da -da 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 -da. Now, once you can play that, da -da 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 -da. and once you have the, da -da 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 -da. then try to put those two brackets together. Da -da 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 and you kind of can do that for the whole song. And when things get more difficult, just make the brackets a little bit smaller. And the smaller you make them, the easier it is. And then you kind of just hook them together once you have the individual parts. And that's how eventually you'll learn the whole melody. So that's kind of your homework for the next few days. Uh, in the next video that I'll be posting probably in the, in the end of this weekend, so probably on Sunday or Monday, uh, I'll be talking about some other steps to take with this song after that. So I hope you can make it in the next, you know, three, four days to actually learn the melody and uh, play it. And, you know, if you're going a little slower, that's fine. No rush, you know, just do it at your own pace. And uh, yeah, hope that we're all going to have a lot of fun with this summer challenge, learning these five songs. So uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, hope we're going to have a lot of fun this week and talk to you in the next video in a few days. Ciao.